we're doing volume of rectangular prisms visually. So they're walking us through how to get through a volume of a problem, and that's talking about rectangular prisms. Okay, so volume, let's talk about each one of these. Volume is the space on the inside. Uh, rectangular. is talking about it's a rectangle base so the bottom of it is a rectangle and prism is basically like a, uh, a 3d object okay so let's go ahead and put all these together and see what we, get. we got answer answer what all of the questions in order to determine so we're asked to determine the volume or the space on the inside of this rectangular prism three-dimensional object that has a rectangle on the bottom so if you notice here's our rectangle on the bottom i'd really encourage you to start practicing memorizing how to do these so usually when we're looking at something like this, it would be whatever the area of the base is. Times the height. And this is a real important concept in math when we start doing volume is basically what's happening here is whatever this section is right here, if we fill that section all the way up to the height, then that completes all the space on the inside of this three-dimensional object. So for these types of problems, it would be length times width and that's your area of the base so these are the related so these two is the area of the base length times width and then you're multiplying it by the height so there's three parts that you're multiplying here but make sure you don't just multiply these three numbers together actually focus on what's going on here for this problem okay now uh i just want to kind of clear some things up um height would be how tall it is so height is uh, how tall now length and width a lot of students get this confused and it's a little bit tricky so um it's kind of one of those unspoken rules but length is always the longest side out of the length and width so it doesn't it, that's why it's a little bit confusing because it can alternate depending on which is the longest length longest width would be the smallest out of these two and then height is always the up and down one okay um, but it's just a matter of just focusing on doing these in order so what would be the order here how would we find the area of the base first which numbers would we multiply well that would be the five times the six. Now, which one would be the length? Six would be the length because it's the longer one. It's the bigger one. And five would be the width. And then four would be the height or how tall it is. All right. So they're going to take us through this little structure here. And it's just uh, good to kind of get the order right when we do these. Okay. So let's uh, go in order. So first, we're going to play. They're going to give us some uh, cubes on the this side here so how many cubes are there now you can count them but it's better to kind of recognize like I said match the side that goes with that so what's the side that goes with it I've already put it there that's a five try it and then the next one is they're gonna do the the uh, that was the width then they're gonna do the length Okay, so that fills it all in. So that's the area of the base. That's what's going on. How do you find area of the base? Length times width. Five times six is 30. And then now we're going to go up to the height, filling it all in. 
So that would be 5 times 6 is our 30. Times what? How high did it go? How many of these sets of 30 did we have? We had 4 of them. So 4 times 30 is 120. All right. So as you go through these, I really encourage you just kind of practice looking at it as a base and then extending it up and not just multiplying all the numbers together. All right. Same type of problem. And then you're just going through the play function, following along with what they're asking you to do. Remember to think about the idea of the area of the base times the height here. 